Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial. So I already threw out a video where I was exploring how to use the TD Ameritrade API and I kind of introduced the topic but I kind of hesitated working with certain endpoints because part of the process before we can actually work with those endpoints is we have to authenticate ourselves. And that authentication process basically means providing our credentials about our particular account so that way we can get a particular code and then we pass that code through a different endpoint at which point we can get an access token. And that access token allows us to access those particular endpoints. Now, while this is a manual process, we can actually automate this. So we can actually automate the process of providing our credentials. We can automate the process of getting the code and then passing that through to a different endpoint in order to kind of skip the component. Now, in order to do that, though, we do have to learn how to use a new library. And this library is called Splinter. So you'll usually hear Splinter alongside with another library, which is called Selenium. Selenium and Splinter are used to automate, basically, interactions with your browser. That's the way you can think about it. What do I mean by interactions with your browser? Well, for example, I'm currently on a web page. With Splinter and Selenium, I can automate the process of clicking that button and then going here and then clicking that button. I can automate the process of downloading files. I can automate the process of getting a URL. I can automate the process of scrolling if I wanted to. So if I wanted to, I can automate this process of scrolling. So there's a lot that you can do with this. It's, it's a very popular library just because it is very powerful because all of a sudden, all your interactions that you're currently doing inside of a browser can now potentially be automated. And we're gonna leverage this tool in order to automate the process of filling out a form and then requesting certain information from that form and then taking it to then go and basically authentic authenticate ourselves. Now, we're not gonna be using the TD Ameritrade uh, API on this example, but what we will do is we'll see how to log into a Facebook account. So I'm just gonna try to log into my Facebook. Now, in order to use this library, we do have to install it because it is not installed by default. However, if you go to your um, Anaconda prompt, I usually like to run it as an administrator because it's usually just safer. Once you go from here, it would be very simple. Most people say, oh, let's just do pimp install Selenium or you know whatever. Don't do that. Just do pip install Splinter because if you install Splinter, then it installs in Selenium by default. And then I always like to make sure that I do it as a user one so that way you know, there's no authentication ones and things like that. I found this method kind of works the best. Now it should come back and say, hey, I already have the stuff, which it does. So it's saying that it's already satisfied. Um, but once you've installed it, you can tell it's just going to install Splinter, Selenium, and then URL lib3. So everything's good to go. You would then import those libraries. And then from here, uh, I do have a username and password that I associate with my Facebook account. I don't want people to see it, obviously. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be storing those two variables in a file, uh, a Python file called config, and then I'm just going to be importing those two variables. And so we'll see how we'll leverage them down the road. Now, in order to interact with this browser, we do need a, a couple more things. And so one of them is we need something called the Chrome driver. The Chrome driver is an exe file that will allow us to basically open up a browser and then interact with it. Now, there are multiple versions of a Chrome driver. However, you need to get a particular one that will be used for Chrome. Now, there are other drivers for Firefox and, and other ones. Um, I'm not going to cover those browsers in this example. I am assuming that you will be using Chrome. Chrome is the more popular one, so it kind of just makes sense to stick with Chrome. So in order to go and get the driver, it's, it's very simple. You just go to Chromium, uh, and then it's called chromedriver.chromium. So right here, and then if I just uh, click that, it takes us to a new web page. And then you'll see there's some information on it. Oh, yeah, all this fun stuff, right? So getting started and, and all that kind of fun stuff. What you want to do is you want to go down to downloads. And so downloads will take you to a new page. And they'll basically tell you all the versions of your particular Chrome driver that are currently out. Now, a lot of people ask, well, which version should I get? Well, lucky for you, that's easy to determine. So if you go over here to the upper right-hand corner of your Chrome browser, you just click that number. Well, it's definitely not a number. It's three dots. And then you go down to help. 
and then about Google Chrome. And then from here, you'll see your version. So right now I have 74.03729, blah, blah, blah. So that's my Chrome version. So I wanna get the Chrome driver that is associated with that version. So normally I could get this one, or for me, I usually just use the Chrome 75 one. I try to stick with the latest one if possible. Most time it works with no problem, usually. Uh, but all you would do is you would just click it, it takes you to a new page, and then you just have to download it for your respective system. I'm on uh, Windows, so I just download Win32. And then what it will do is I save that file uh, right here. So it's gonna be on my desktop and I unzip it. And then inside of it, you see the Chrome driver exe file. So once you've done that, you've done all the steps. I recommend that you put it into a location that you can easily reference because you will have to provide the file path um, to this particular uh, file inside your code. So you want to make sure you put it in a location that uh, makes sense. So I'm going to close out that folder and then I'm going to go back to my Jupyter notebook and then I'm going to close out my windows. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Again, it's, it's, they have a lot of examples out there. This is a popular library. So um, I'll make sure to put links here, but it, it's, it's actually a relatively easy setup I, I find. Okay. So now that we've done that, we want to import our libraries. So just like that, I'm good to go. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to define an object for, oh, sorry, a variable called executable path. It will equal a dictionary where the first uh, key value is a keyword argument and then the argument that I want associated with that uh, key. And so we'll see how this is leveraged a little bit in a little bit, but uh, we're going to be passing this through to our browser object. Now, when we open up uh, Chrome browser, uh, we can actually, if, if we want, we can have certain preferences that we already have predefined. So for example, do I want my window maximized? Do I want to disable notifications and things along that nature? And we'll find that this will come in handy when it comes to uh, visiting certain, uh, what is it, uh, uh, certain websites. Because certain websites, when you go there, notifications will pop up and, and things like that. And, and that can really get in the way of uh, trying to fill out forms or just getting to certain elements and, and things along that nature. So uh, if you want, we can always uh, pass through some preferences by using a particular object. And so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna create uh, some an options variable. So what we're doing is we're gonna set some default behaviors for our browser, that's all. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new variable called options. I'm gonna call my web driver module and then I'm going to call my Chrome options object and then there we go again that's just using the selenium one because unfortunately uh, from what I could tell browser uh, splinter does not have an options one but we can pass through a Chrome options object and it will know how to process it um, and the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure my window is maximized so make sure the window is maximized and so we're going to call our options variable. We're going to call the add argument method. And then it's just a command line argument. So dash, dash, start, dash, maximized, just like that. Now people always ask, well, how do you know all these options? You know, what, what are, where's a list of all this, right? I will be providing a list to all of them. There's a couple hundred, <laughs> not to... Not to discourage anyone, but there's a lot of options out there. And unfortunately, I, I would never be able to cover them all. Uh, so I'm just going to be providing a link. And really, it's just passing through the argument. And usually, you're good to go unless there's some kind of other component that you you know have to do, you know pass through that component. Uh, but there is a list out there. Just keep in mind, it is a little bit intimidating at first. So just read through it a little bit. And hopefully, you find your, your ground. Um, and then also, I want to make sure that notifications are off and so we're going to do options add argument and then it's going to be dash dash disable dash notifications at least i hope i spelled that right okay and then from here we're going to create our browser object so i'm going to create a new variable we're going to call it browser it's going to equal a browser class object and then we're going to specify what type of browser it is by default it is Firefox, but I'm going to specify Chrome. So 
uh, create a new browser object by default. It is Firefox, but I don't want Firefox. I want Chrome. Okay. And then there's the second keyword arguments. This is going to be executable path. It's just this one right here. Again, this is providing a path to my Chrome driver folder where my exe file is. Um, there's another parameter called headless. If you have it set equal to true, it will open a browser, but you will not see that browser. So again, if you set it equal to true, it will open a browser, but you will not see that browser. It will do all the interactions behind the scenes, and then it will close itself, but you'll never see it. It does come in handy sometimes to do headless. In this example, I don't want headless, so I'm going to set that equal to fa false. And then the next option is going to be options. And so we're going to say, hey, we want uh, some options when we're opening it. And so we're going to pass through our options variable. And so this is basically just passing through all of our preferences in a sense. OK. And then once we've done that, we can now start working with it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to visit a URL. So I'm going to say HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.facebook.com. If I press control enter, something already uh, broke. Oh, that will do it. OK, and so if you see down here, <laughs> Oh, lordy, lordy. Cannot win today. Hopefully that's right this time. Okay, <laughs> there it went. It worked this time. So it opens up a browser. It's flashing, so it lets me know it's it's there. And then it takes me here. And then this is the part where we have to start filling out stuff, right? So if you see up here at the top, there's an email component, and there's a password component, and then we got to click our button to log in. So the first thing I always do is I got to first ask the question, what elements am I working with? So if you right click and you do inspect, this will open up your inspector. If you click up here, select an element, and then it will take you to the code where that element exists. And so if I go here, I'll notice that that particular uh, element is called is an input tag element. It's got a type email class name, ID, and so on. I'm going to leverage this ID component to find that element because I need to find that element and then paste in my content. I also need to find my password one. Well, lucky for us, it's also an input one and it does have an ID called pass. So I need to find that element, fill it out, and then we can move to the next component, which is finding this button and clicking it. Again, it has an ID, so I'm going to find it by the ID, and then I'm going to click it. So I'm going to close this out, and then from here, I'm going to find my element. So I'm going to say find my email element. And so I'm going to say username underscore box equals browser dot find by ID email. So pass find an element by the ID. We know that ID is email. And then once you find that element, fill out the element. So you find it and then you fill it out. And then we're going to call the fill method. And then we're going to pass through the item that we want to fill in. It's just my username. So I'm going to say user name. Perfect. And then it filled it out just like I wanted it to. So it's working good so far. Technically, I can consolidate this line into a single line. So I will show you how to do that. You can break it into two if you want. But, you know, why write more code than you have to? So fill in the password box. And so I'm going to say uh, password equals browser find by ID pass and then fill and then I'm going to pass through my password variable. Once I've done that, I need to click that button. So I'm going to find the submit button and click it. So click the login 
button. We'll create a new variable called submit, browser, find by ID, it's u underscore zero underscore two. Again, look at the code if you're confused. We want the first element we find and then click that element. Perfect. It's thinking. Okay, so it's going to open it up, click it, bam, I'm logged in. So we are good to go. So that does it for today's video. Again, this is just the bare minimum to get us started for the TD Ameritrade API. I will be visiting the Chrome driver, or sorry, I'm Splinter and Selenium again. But at this point, I just need you to know this much in order to go fill out a form and do all that kind of fun stuff. So we will be revisiting this in more detail because it is such an important library and we will see how we can leverage it for web scraping and things along that nature. But at this point, I just need you to understand how to find an element, fill out that element, and then click a button. That's all. So if you have any questions about what we covered today, please put them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So in our next video, naturally, we're gonna be going to the TD Ameritrade API again, and we will see how we can uh, automate our authentication process and then start using those endpoints. So we will see you in the next video.